I recently started taking a course called Photoshop Grunge or Photoshop Artistry led by an amazing fellow named Sebastian Michaels. The, the course can be found actually at photoshopgrunge.com. At any rate, it's really a, a course on digital artistry, and I'm not sure where I fit in on this. I'm not sure what my style is, but either way, it's uh, techniques that are, are worth learning, if not for digital art, and even for regular photography. At any rate, I decided to try to go all the way in, and I, I made this as my first composition. And what I'd like to do is is take you through, because I said that on my blog, I would try to show how I do some of the things I do. And I thought this would be a nice thing to take through and show you how I made this from the start um, using Photoshop. So let me take away this finished product and show you how I made this from the beginning. Here's the base photo. This was a photograph that I took. It was actually out at a cemetery near my house from a hill. And there was this one lone tree in a snowbank. And so the white is actually all snow. And we have this bare tree in the winter. The first thing I did was to pull in a texture uh, to layer on top of this. And this is the texture right here. And to start with, there were a few things I wanted to change in this texture. I didn't particularly like this green line here, so I ended up cloning it out. In addition, some of these scratches uh, I thought were a bit too much, and I cloned some of them out, but not all of them. And I then took this texture and put it on top of my image. And when you do that and transform the texture so that it fits the image exactly, this is what you end up with. And obviously this isn't what you want to see. And the way to change this is simply to change and run through uh, some of the blend modes. So if we change this blend mode from normal to an alternative blend mode, we can run through them. You can see there's darken. You can try other ones, soft light. It blends the two layers together in a fashion determined by the blend mode. Now I happen to choose or I thought one that looked best was actually a, a bit of an unusual one, which is a linear burn. Where'd that one go? Here we go. And that was the look uh, that we got with linear burn. Now, I then clipped an additional layer to that, an adjustment layer, a hue saturation layer. The reason being that to me, this original image was a cold scene. And these are obviously very warm tones. And I wanted to try to stay true to the original scene, which had cool tones. And so I clipped a hue saturation layer to this texture, which means that it will affect only the texture and not the underlying layers below that. So by uh, making a hue saturation layer, I made this uh, a very blue color. And you'll see it's a little bit overwhelming right here, but things change as the composition uh, goes on. I then decided to bring an additional texture in. And the texture that I decided to bring in next was this one right here. And the KK stands for Kim Klassen, who is uh, the person that put these textures together. She did a great job. At any rate, uh, this was the next texture that I brought in. And if we go back to the image, you can see uh, the texture laying above the image. And again, the original texture was square. I just transformed it to fit over the image. And again, when you're in a normal blend mode, you're just going to see the texture. But again, I ran through the blend modes to try to see what fit the image best. And this time, the one that I chose was soft light. And you can see that that's taken a good deal of the blue out by adding in some warm tones. And these time, this time, I let the warm tones remain. Next, I wanted to add a edge effect, a sort of a grungy edge effect to the composition. And the one that I chose to add was this one. I, I can't recall who produced it. And I wasn't planning to leave it in a brown tone. That'll be changed. But at any rate, we go to the composition. I drag this onto the composition. 
and transformed it so it fit. And once again, in the normal blend mode, all we do is we see uh, the, the layered image on top of it. But by changing the blend mode, we can uh, go ahead and change how that looks. And in this case, I chose multiply as the best looking blend mode. And now this sort of edge effect is integrated into the composition. But as I mentioned, I didn't want to leave it with these brown tones clashing with these cool tones. I wanted to change the, the tonality um, of, the, of the overlying edge effect. And I did this by clipping several layers to the edge effect so that the adjustments that they carry affect only that edge effect layer. So we might have, doesn't look like uh, too much has changed, but I probably added a little something with this. But then I changed the edge into a black and white to take the tones out. And then I went ahead with a hue saturation layer and colorized the uh, black and white effect to make it, you can see the edge effect going from more black and white to a blue tone to match the rest of the image. And then with this curves adjustment layer, I just changed some of the contrast within the image, as you can see, making the darks a bit darker and the brights a bit brighter using uh, an S curve. So now the image is starting to take on the appearance more of the final work, but it's not there yet. And in the base image, I found the lone tree sitting among the white background to be something that I liked. But here, when we're starting to add a lot of other textures and parts of the composition, it felt very blank in here to me, and it felt like it needed more. The uh, first thing I thought I would do is to add some light effects. And I did this using a Photoshop plugin called No Light Factory, which actually gives you a great deal of control uh, over light that you add to the image. And uh, let me show you the effect that that had. And the light, it's not really a preset. It starts with a preset. But then you have to uh, adjust the parameters as you uh, would like it to look in the image. And so I added this light to the image. And one of the things I really like about it and how to adjust in it is not only this main starlight, but it also added into the film edge these linear, small linear rays that to me sort of look like it incorporated the edge more uh, into the image itself. And I, I sort of like that. Next, I wanted to try to take this tree and give it perhaps less of a photorealistic effect. And I did that by using another Photoshop plugin by Topaz, uh, Topaz Simplify. And what I did was use the uh, Buzz Sim preset. And that gave me this. And I really liked, to some degree, what it did with the tree by giving these sort of magenta, purplish, pinkish blotches between the branches. That definitely uh, was not photorealistic. But what I wanted to do, or what I decided would look best, would be, number one, to tone this effect down, and number two, to limit it just to the tree. So the first thing I did was go to the opacity and actually decrease the uh, effect. And I believe I knocked it down to about 58%. Then again, I wanted to limit it just to this tree. And so I put a black layer mask on and uh, gave it a uh, gradient, a radial gradient, so that just the effect on the tree would show through on the layer. And that gave me this, leaving everything else intact, but putting that effect of the Topaz plug-in uh, onto the tree. Next, I felt like I wanted to pull something into this area of the composition. And I've always been a fan of mysterious looking text. And so I found this text produced by Two Little Owls. And it's, it's just uh, from their French script on antique paper um, set. And you can see here, it has a very old style look to it. And so I went ahead and brought that 
into the composition. And you can see once again in normal blend mode, it just sits over top of the picture, which doesn't look very good. And so going through the blend modes, I found that the blend mode that best integrated this into the uh, image was multiply. And in addition to that, I wanted just a portion of that text to appear in the image, not the whole thing. So I made a layer mask with black and slowly with a soft brush not set to 100% opacity, slowly brought in portions of that back. You can't really read it and you don't really have to read it. It's just a hint of some mysterious text in that region of the image. And I like that but wanted it to be a little darker so I simply duplicated that layer just to make it a, a bit darker. Next I had, and I put them all in one folder, a couple of dabs with some grunge brushes to just sort of add a little in here and there, picking up some of the colors here uh, from different areas of the photograph. And I'll turn that on and off. It's, it's a little hard to see, but if you look in here, it sort of fills that area in with some of the colors drawn out from other areas of the photograph. This is it off and on. And I thought that that just integrated everything better into the look of the picture and put those all into one folder. Now we're getting close to the finished composition. I wanted to add a little more pop to this central uh, white or warm toned area of the image. And so I added a curve layer set to soft light and made a mask based on some luminosity selections to just add a little bit more contrast to the brighter part of the picture, as you can see here. I really started to struggle at this point because I felt like it really wasn't done yet and I wasn't quite sure what to add. And I experimented uh, with a number of different things and all of a sudden it occurred to me, it's a tree, it needs birds. And so I uh, got a Photoshop brush with bird silhouettes and added those. And you can see here in this folder with the birds, if I turn these off, that there's a number of strokes with uh, a number of different bird silhouette brushes. And you can see I first I put some here, over there, put some in the distance so it sort of drew the whole thing together. I felt like there still weren't quite enough, so I added some on top, some to the right, several more. Some of these brushes were bigger, and I believe I erased some of the birds that the brushes put, uh, put in. So there you have it, my final composition. One of my first attempts at digital photo art. I hope that I can grow more from here in terms of uh, being able to do more things with it and also try to figure out how to better integrate this sort of thing into my photography style. I'm certainly finding it interesting and learning a lot of techniques that I can integrate into my straight photography as well as developing somewhat of an interest in producing these sort of works. So I hope that uh, this video was useful in terms of uh, showing you how I, I put together this particular composition. As an aside, I realized that during this whole video, I left my grid on. Obviously, this is not part of the final composition. I just always work in Photoshop with this uh, tic-tac-toe grid that shows me the rule of third power points. At any rate, you understand that's not part of the composition, but just thought I'd explain it because uh, it's here, but it's not in the final photo as put in the blog for good reason. So thanks very much for stopping by and listening.